Today is going to be a big day for progress and dancing. <laughs> but mostly progress, mostly progress. Welcome back, my beautiful builders, to another episode of All the Mod 7 to the sky. <laughs> we are getting our jig on already today, but we got to stop because we got a lot of work to do. So today I really want to focus on ore processing because thus far in this world, we've been pretty inefficient with how we are treating our sieve setups. Yes, we're getting all of our pieces sieved up and then we're compacting them into the raw ores, but then we're not doing anything with them from there. We're not doubling our ores or even smelting them. We're not not taking these ores and automatically smelting them. I'm having to manually come over every time that I need an ingot and smelt them in a netherite furnace. And that's just very inefficient. So today we're going to do a lot of ore processing. We're going to take our raw ores. We're going to make more material out of this. So we're actually going to get a transfer rate of three raw iron into eight ingots so it's going to be pretty nice and then we're also going to have it automatically smelted into ingots so that we can use it in crafting recipes so lots of ore processing today lots to do and this is all going to be thanks to mechanism and I think before we go down the mechanism rabbit hole, I think it's probably a good idea for us to automate some of the items that we're going to be using all the time. So things like our enriched alloys, our control circuits, all of these can be automatically crafted so that when we need to make a machine in the future, it's all there just ready for us to craft. So I say we automate this. I think it will save us a lot of time in the future. And I think before we go down the mechanism rabbit hole, I think it's probably a good idea for us to automate some of the items that we're going to be using all the time. So things like our enriched alloys, our control circuits, all of these can be automatically crafted so that when we need to make a machine in the future, it's all there just ready for us to craft. So I say we automate this. I think it will save us a lot of time in the future. And with a huge thanks to Laser.io, all of the basic crafting materials for Mechanism is now automated. Everything from the enrichment chamber to the metallurgic infusers, and I even have some crafter tier ones down here that is doing some auto crafting for the control circuit. So things like the advanced control circuit that takes the basic control circuit as well as the infused alloy, I have it being automatically crafted down here and giving us a stack of 64 of each one of these so we can use them in our AE system. But yeah, this got a little bit intense, especially with the laser IO. You'll see that uh, it's kind of a cobweb back here. We had to do a lot of finagling in order to get things to go to the right places. But after a while, it did get done. And it is very nice to just have all of this ready to go for when we need to craft. So... Once again, I am building in buffers as well. That's something that I should mention. If we go underneath here, you'll see that we do have, well, actually, I think for this one, let's see, how am I doing it with this one? Yeah, I'm doing it on the actual node itself for this one. So we do have some buffers set up for some of these. And then for some of these, I just have some drawer downgrades in them in order to only stack 64 in here. So now that we have a lot of the basic mechanism components made up, I think it's time for us to look at ore processing. And there's a couple of different ways we can go about doing this. However, I think the best is going to be the chemical injection chamber. This technically isn't the most value out of our iron. You would actually want to go with the chemical dissolution chamber for that, but that takes sulfuric acid, and sulfuric acid is a pain to get. You have to get sulfur trioxide and water vapor. That sulfur trioxide takes oxygen and sulfur dioxide. The sulfur dioxide is gotten from a chemical oxidizer. It it's just a lot more steps for not that much more benefit, in my opinion. So instead, we're going to skip that one and we're going to go straight to the chemical injection chamber, which just takes hydrogen chloride, which is actually pretty easy to make. So I've went ahead and extended out our processing room here because we're going to need some extra room for all of this ore processing. So the first thing that we need to make is brine and... 
To do that, we're going to be using the thermal evaporation plant in order to turn water into brine. Now, I actually haven't messed with this particular uh, plant block, this multi-block before, so this is going to be a little bit of a new territory for me, but I think that it's pretty simple and is kind of like the Tinker Smeltery in order to get it to work. So we just do something like this and then build it up many, many blocks. And then we'll also have to put in some of these thermal evaporation valves eventually in order to get the liquids out. Alrighty, so it looks like the evaporation plant is indeed constructed. Now we just need to feed it its items. So let's start off with the sink here and I'll go ahead and put a fluid pipe with an upgrade in it. So fluid pipe directly in like that and then just pipe wrench on this end and then we'll throw in this upgrade and that should fill this thing up with water. Yes. Hello, buddy. You're all up in the way. What do you have? You have nothing. Go away. So the next thing that I need to do is heat up this thermal evaporation plant. And we can do that pretty simply with some resistive heaters and then just some flux points on the side. And now this thing should be making brine. However, I think I placed this thing the wrong way around. <laughs> Yeah, there we go, that'll help. And now as our heat goes up, our production will also go up. And it looks like we're making about uh, 4.8 millibuckets per tick. However, that is going up pretty rapidly. <laughs> nice, and that is a lot of brine. So now out of the back, we can export that brine into our electrolytic separator. And what this is gonna do is give us the chlorine that we need. So I should just be able to output like this, put ourselves an advanced pipe upgrade in, and now our brine should be filling up into here. I just need to give this thing some power, which I think I can do just like this. Go ahead and put in a pipe upgrade for that as well. And this guy is working. And as you can see, we are getting ourselves some chlorine as well as some sodium. Now out of this thing, I'm just going to pipe into two tanks that I'm going to use in order to make a buffer. Well, I guess I'm not doing this with the pipes mod. Actually, I think I can. I just need to grab gas pipes instead. I thought that this was making liquids, but apparently I was wrong. And this is actually outputting gases. So what I should be able to do is do a gas pipe just like that and then wrench that side and put in our advanced pipe upgrade. And now this should be getting chlorine. Yes, perfect. And this should be getting sodium. Absolutely amazing. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to do this slightly differently just so that it looks a little bit better. And I'm also gonna need a second electrolytic separator in order to separate water. So I have myself another sink over here. I'm just going to extract out of it with an advanced pipe upgrade. And now we are getting hydrogen as well as oxygen. And we need hydrogen chloride. Here's hydrogen, here's chlorine right here. I mean, we got the parts. And to put those parts together, all we need is a chemical infuser. And what that's gonna do is take chlorine and take hydrogen and make hydrogen chloride that we can then store up in another tank. And at this point, our ore processing is absolutely chewing through our power. So it's time for a couple more power reactors. Man, even with three of these reactors set up, it's still just not enough power. I think that means it's time for an upgrade and that means we're gonna need nether stars. So in order to get unlimited nether stars, we're gonna take advantage of a mod called Hostile Neural Networks. And what this mod allows us to do is to make a simulation of a particular mob over and over again and then get the loot out of it. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a model of a particular mob. In this case, our mob is going to be the wither. We're going to kill the wither six times and that should create a mob model that we can then simulate over and over again with prediction matrices inside of this simulation chamber. And then that should get us some wither predictions. That wither prediction can then go into the loot fabricator and that should give us nether stars. It's kind of convoluted, but as we go through it, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's go into the end and let's kill six withers in order to build up our model framework. So I still feel like doing this the vanilla way is probably best. So here we go. 
We now have a Wither Data model, and we should just be able to kill this guy with this Wither Data model on us, and it'll start collecting data so that we can simulate this guy. Apparently, I messed this up. <laughs> but that's okay. I should still be able to attack this dude and do everything. Can I hit him? Yes. Now, did that work? Uh, data per kill, one. Data collected, zero. That did not work. Ah, apparently I missed a step. <laughs> I have to add the data model inside of the deep learner and then kill this wither. Well, that kind of sucks. Oh, well, we have to go and collect up some more wither skeleton skulls and then we can go back to killing this dude. Yeah, I have to say, this thing works out a whole lot better whenever you use it correctly. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is much easier. We only have three more of these guys to kill and then we should be able to simulate them. Nice. Alrighty, so we have our Wither data model up to basic tier. Now let's give this thing a try in our simulation chamber. So go ahead and throw this in here. And it says, cannot begin simulation, missing input prediction matrix. So we are going to have to craft up some of those, I believe. So prediction, let's see, predi prediction matrices. And these are just some glass panes, iron, lapis, and gold. And it looks like it makes quite a bit of them. So we're just going to make a lot of them and we're going to throw them in here. And it looks like we can't keep a ton of them. So we'll probably want to supply this from Applied Energistics 2 in the future. But for right now, let's just see what happens here. Sequence prediction failed. Uh, processing results. So we got ourselves a generalized ender prediction that time. So each time that this thing runs, each time that it hits 100%, it should either produce a generalized ender prediction or it should produce us a wither prediction. And if the wither prediction happens, then we can take that wither prediction and I believe turn it into a nether star. So if we go ahead and look at this nether star and we go to the loot fabricator, yeah, one wither prediction will give us one nether star. So we just got to wait for us to actually actually make one of these. Our accuracy is very, very low right now. So every time that this simulation goes through, we'll get more and more accurate. And right now we have model accuracy of 6%. So every time this goes through, we're going to have 6% accuracy of generating one of these wither models. Eventually this can get up to like 96%, which means 96% of the time we'll be creating an actual wither, uh, an actual wither matrix here. But uh, for right now, in order for this to, you know, get started, it's going to start very low and then it'll ramp up over time. And then we'll have a ton of nether stars. I guess I should also mention that we could technically increase this ourselves by going and fighting more withers and increasing our model tier. Right now we just have a basic model. We could go to higher models by killing more and more withers. And by doing that, we would immediately skip over some of this model accuracy and it would go up to, I want to say it goes up to like 30 to start off with or something like that. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to let this thing run and build itself up by itself. Either way is fine. If you want to go fight withers, great. If not, you can just let this thing run over and over again. This one looks like it succeeded and we got ourselves a wither prediction. Nice. Now I should be able to throw this into here, select another star and bada bing, bada boom. We should get ourselves another star. Nice and easy. <laughs> so like I said, this is a way to get unlimited nether stars because this simulation can just run over and over and over again for a long time and the accuracy will get better and then the weather predictions will get more and more. So this is awesome and this is what we'll use to upgrade to our last reactor. If you guys remember the reason we were stuck on getting that reactor, that is the nitro reactor. We needed the nitro capacitor and the nitro capacitor needs nitro crystals and the nitro crystals costed first off 20 million FE, but also nether star blocks of redstone and a block of blazing crystal, which actually this isn't too hard to get. The nether star was really our blocker. And now our only barrier is going to be the 20 million FE that it takes to craft. And with this reactor, we should be generating 500 thousand fe per tick that is crazy and now one million fe per tick that should last us a while 
So now that we have our power issue resolved, we can continue working on our ore processing. And the first leg of this process is going to be the chemical injection chamber. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take in our raw material and we're going to add in our hydrogen chloride that we just made, and that will give us shards. From there, I'm going to output all of the shards into this obsidian chest that's going to act as a buffer. From here, we're going to export into purification chambers and those shards are going to be turned into clumps. The clumps are then going to go into crushers where it will be turned into dirty dust. That dirty dust will then be sent into the purification chamber where we get the raw iron dust or aluminum dust or whatever it is that we're making. And that raw dust is going to go directly into these storage drawers over here. It's going to be a logistical nightmare, and anytime that there's a logistical nightmare, XNet is always our go-to. I think this may be the loudest machines I have in the base. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> All of the loud racket is now over with and this is completely set up and ore processing is kind of complete. I mean, we're getting all the way to dust. And at this point, we can do one of two things. We can leave our items as dust, which I think is the direction I'm going to go, or I can go ahead and smelt it into ingots. The reason that I may leave it as dust, though, is you do have things such as the sig ore, the signalum ore, or whatever this stuff is called. Yeah, signalum ore. This stuff is actually created from other dusts. So it could be useful to keep some dusts on hand just so that if we need to create anything like this, we can just craft it into dust and then go and smelt it manually or however we want to do that. But I kind of think that keeping things in dust form may actually be better for this particular pack and then just smelt up a buffer worth of iron. So let's say if below 4,000 iron, then go ahead and turn on a netherite smelter to smelt up some of the iron dust. But honestly, I think that keeping things in dust form is probably going to be the best option for a long-term situation. Another thing is this is incredibly slow. There are so many processes that this has to get through from the chemical injection chamber, purification, crusher, and then all the way to the enrichment chamber. It's extremely slow and all of these things need speed upgrades because this is like, we're just standing still. We're standing still right now here because these aren't done and these aren't done and so on and so forth. So I think we need to get speed upgrades for absolutely everything along this line. And then we should be cooking with dust, <laughs> theoretically. However, all of that is going to take quite a lot of power. So we may have to upgrade even further in order to get this fully operational. But that is it. That is ore processing done here in all the mod seven. And honestly, it wasn't too bad. I mean, a lot of XNet configuration, but overall it was pretty simple to get this set up. Now we just need to get the speed upgrades in and we will be good to go. But I'm actually way out of time for today's episode. And in fact, I think this episode is going to be late coming out because of it, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for me today. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video as well as if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great day. <laughs> Getting jiggy with it. <laughs>